Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Stargate. This is season one. This is episode number 20. This episode is called There But For The Grace Of God. I'm actually really sad that I'm getting to the end of this season already, actually. There's like, I think two episodes left after this one and I've kind of done like a fast skip Babylon 5 with it where I've just ended up enjoying it so much that I've just completely like binged <laughs> the season and I'm actually quite scared that I've done that so it just kind of shows how much it really pulled me in though I guess even with it the current episodic format I kind of just immediately just got into this and kind of enjoy watching it quite a lot. I like the variation of the wilds we visit. I like the different social, cultural problems that we often see that we face. And it's going to be interesting to see how that progresses going on into season two onwards, because, you know, things are going to get deeper, I expect, with with things that happen in this. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. The title of this one, isn't really given that much away, to be honest. Although when God is mentioned in this show, it's usually something to do with the Gwaruld. So I'm expecting that this is probably something to do with those guys. And we have seen Apophis, like, earlier in episodes, like the Nox episode, and later on. And it's been episodes where I've been like, I really didn't expect to see them like this much during the first season. I just thought it would be kind of setting us up for the long run and we'd maybe get more of them in season two. So to see them popping up more and more as we've gone through season one, I've actually really enjoyed that and it's been a nice surprise. So I'm looking forward to seeing if, if they turn up in this one. So let's go. Good morning, campers. <laughs> There's damage here. It appears to have been done by Goa weaponry. I do not believe this battle took place recently. Oh. No bodies. Do you recognize any of these symbols? Taken everybody. No, this place is definitely alien. You ever seen anything like this before? Is that a shrine? We must return to Earth as quickly as possible. But? This place is not safe. No bodies. Oh, hello. Please don't touch anything, Daniel. I think this is a lab. Another hey. souvenir shop, sir. Egyptian. We're out of here. Let's go. Please don't take something back. Oh shit! God, you can't walk through it, can you? Oh, shit. Daniel, we're leaving. Let's go. No! That scanned him, right? Guys, I need a hand with this thing. It's too heavy for me to move, but we have to take it back. Where did he go? Where did he go? He's gone somewhere, right? Jack? Oh, my God. What happens if he puts the cord in? Sam? Where's he going to end up? Oh no 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 this part this part this part Alternate universe Gone back in time What's happened? Identify yourself Daniel Jackson SG1 General, what's this all about? How did you get an SG-1 remote IRS deactivation device? What are you talking about? Unauthorized incoming travelers! Who the hell are you? Hello? Oh, God. I have to speak to someone! I like the role reversal with Hammond and Jack, though. <gasps> Hi! Catherine. You know me? You recruited me to translate the cartouche found at Giza. Oh. I went through on the first mission through the Stargate to Abydos. And unless the last two years have been some wacky, wacky dream, I am a member of SG-1. Could I see Captain Carter? Samantha Carter? Yes! She's not in the military. She's a doctor. <gasps> PhD astrophysics. She's attending a more important business at the moment. We've only got 50% of the list through the beta side, General. Voyager is still en route. Excuse me, I know you're a little busy right now. It's all right, Catherine. 
What is it? Oh, I feel I like they've all got time for her. The gate, Jack. No. How much time do we have? Why? He knows things. What can you tell me about the Goulds? What? The Gould? You know who they are? Yeah. Tell me what you know. You know everything that I know. Look, I'm a member of SG-1 with you, Captain Carter, and Teal. Where is Teal? He won't be here. A big guy, gold emblem on his head, gold in his stomach. You can't miss him. A Jaffa? Yes, he's our, our friend. Get this man out of here, now. Oh, shit. How does he come to the gate? How does he know the things he knows? According to Dr. Langford, you solved the gate without me. Did you still go to Abydos with the intention of blowing up a nuclear device? How did you know that? He was that. You were willing to commit suicide because your son had recently died. He shot himself with your gun, right? I swear I didn't tell him anything. I love this. So did you still go to Chulak? What is Chulak? That's why we don't the have Jafar to home world. You know the symbols? Yes. John? Would you want me to write it down? Yes. Are we going to see Tilk? No, like Tilk. Like, Tilk? Oh, everything's screwed up. Why? Sam. Who is it? Dr. Jackson. The of young course. man who came through the Stargate with SG-1 remote code. Report, doctor. We've lost Washington and Philadelphia, sir. I'm sorry. What do you mean by lost? Gone. Show him. Every one of those red dots is a destroyed city. Oh, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm OK. Dr. Carter, there's another report coming on. All military. I just wiped out England. Jesus. Inconsequential. The ghouls? As in Europe, Ships appeared four days ago. They have slowly begun systematically annihilating all signs of civilization. Yes, sir. Yeah. Chevron 2 encoded. Next exit to Tulak. Chevron 3 encoded. Sir, isn't our mission to get the Genesis list through to the beta site? I think we'll try to stop the attack on Earth first. The what what list? is this Genesis list beta site? What is she? Chevron 4 encoded. We're evacuating everyone we can to another planet. You're sending a nuclear weapon to Chulak? You got a problem with that? Proceed with deployment. <laughs> Enemy ship is slowing oh down. Oh god, they've literally in like seconds. penned them in. What are those two doing outside? Get back inside! If they fire on us, chances are we won't even feel it. Where did this come from? It's a deep space transmission. Our receivers picked up about three months ago. Oh! So why are you showing this to me now? Because the transmission originated from the same quadrant of space as P3R233. Where your mirror is. We went to 233 after we received the transmission, but the civilization had been destroyed by the ghouls. Yes! We didn't find any mirror, though. Beware the destroyers. Some of 233's aliens must have sent out the warning oh. before their civilization was destroyed by the ghouls. What does the rest say? It just says they come from, but the, the sentence isn't complete. There's just more sounds, pulses, or beats of some kind. Yeah, we've analyzed them. They're divided into groups. 3, 32, 16, 8, 10, and 12. Good memory. That's six numbers. Yeah. Accord? Gate? That's a Stargate address, just yeah. without the point of origin. Dr. Langford here has presented us with an interesting dilemma. She seems to think we've been handed the address to a ghoul homeworld, possibly where this attack originated. Well, thanks to Daniel. We'll send a bomb through. <gasps> oh! My God. That is Teal'c. Big guy, gold emblem on his head, and ghouled in his stomach. You just saw him on the security camera. He's a Jaffa that led the invasion in the base. Well, he was and probably still is the first prime of Apophis. He would be charged with the most important mission. In my reality, Jack O'Neill convinced Teal to betray Apophis to save our lives. Mm -hmm. Teal gave up everything with a slim chance that we could help free his people from slavery. It doesn't exactly look like we could help him do anything right now. Keep in mind, we just sent a bomb off to his planet. There might not be anything left for him to save. Yes. Not in this universe. Well, his son would be right. All I really have to do is buy a little time. A few minutes to get the gate open, right? That videotape of that Jafar and you together should catch his attention. Thank you. I 
I take it they're not engaged in your reality? No. I did wonder why she had a ring on! They need to be. Destruct sequence activated. Shit. What sort of deception is this? I know it's a little hard to believe, but you guys are pretty advanced. You must know this alternate reality is thing is possible, right? You sent the weapon of destruction there through your Stargate. My people are dead. My family are dead. God. <laughs> that can help Apophis. There is technology he will want to know about. This is a remote control to an interdimensional portal. I can tell Apophis how to find it. Watch that tree Oh, God. Thank you. I think they're still oh, yeah. going to shoot. They also wish to blow us all to hell. <gasps> He got it! He got it! This looks like a Stargate address. Yes! All right, let's get him back to Earth. We're all in very big trouble. They're coming. They're coming. I'm not going to lie, this may have been like the best thing I've watched in a very long time. This was absolutely amazing. I adored every second of watching this. To know that there was this parallel alternate reality, it just kind of made me think of Farscape though with all the werewolves and I was like giggling to myself with all the unrealized realities. To see that the one Daniel ended up going to because of this mirror, Earth was under attack from the Gwauld and Catherine was working at SG-1 and you know, she was basically like, She'd never gone to Abydos, but Jack had. But Daniel had never been there, so they didn't know who he was. And it was like, oh, God, like, this is insane. This is absolutely genius. To see, like, Sam was there, but she was an astrophysicist rather than being part of SG-1. Hammond was colonel and Jack was general. There was no Dr. Fraser. This was absolute genius, this episode, and I loved it. Seeing that, you know, the alternate reality world had also faced the same attack that this parallel Earth was going through for them to then send out this signal and Daniel was able to decipher it and be like, we now know the point of origin of these Gwauld battleships, basically. And seeing one land on the mountain was amazing. And, and then seeing the, the battle for them to survive and all the cities and countries and things they destroyed was absolutely, like, just immense. Like, honest to God, like, I am just, like, in shock at how much this was absolutely amazing. Like, the best episode of this season so far for me, hands down. Like, I don't even know how they're going to finish this season off now with these last two episodes because Daniel's warning at the end. I'm just like, good God, like, how are he's going to be have to tell them what happened? The whole them sending a bomb to Chulak because of... Daniel's knowledge was just like, oh, good God. It was nice to see Catherine. I loved that she was in this. The fact that they all basically sacrificed themselves, well, it, well, Catherine at least, to get Daniel back through to where he needed to be. Seeing Jack get killed, although we didn't see it, we just know that he got killed. Sam blowing everybody up. Hammond getting killed. It was like, it turned into a bloodbath. And seeing Teal'c as Teal'c would have been if he hadn't turned on the Jafar and the Gwawul in our reality was interesting. And I think they probably would have got through to him if this reality's Jack hadn't sent that bomb to Tulak. As soon as his wife and son were like dead, I was like, he ain't gonna help you. And we then saw what he did because of that. And him shooting Daniel before Daniel was able to get through the, the Stargate as well was really cool. Like, I'm just like, I love this, loved it. I'm so excited, like, to watch the last two. I genuinely, like, I can't stress how much, like, this was probably one of the best things I've watched in a long time. Like, this was absolute legendary. I may have to go watch the next one, and I will see you guys later, so thank you.